On a stormy night in 2024, Jenna found herself alone in her secluded countryside home, the rain drumming incessantly against the windows, a constant reminder of her isolation. Her phone, usually a lifeline to the outside world, lay silent, its battery life dwindling, the storm having disrupted the power and cell service hours earlier. The house, an inheritance from her late aunt, had always felt welcoming during the day, its quaint charm and rustic setting offering a peaceful retreat. But at night, especially this night, it seemed to transform. The walls creaked and groaned under the assault of the wind, and shadows cast by the flickering candles danced across the room, creating grotesque shapes that seemed to move with a life of their own. Trying to calm her rising panic, Jenna wrapped herself in a blanket and settled into an armchair, attempting to read by candlelight. But the words blurred on the pages, her attention constantly drawn to the sounds outside and the occasional thump from somewhere within the house. Deciding she needed to check that all windows and doors were securely locked, Jenna moved through the house, her candle casting long, eerie shadows. As she passed the living room, she noticed a faint, wet footprint on the wooden floor, not belonging to her. A chill of fear shot through her, and she hastened to check the back door, finding it locked but the floor mat down, as if someone had stood there recently. Heart pounding, Jenna returned to the living room, intending to call the police, despite the poor cell reception. But as she reached for her phone, a sudden, loud knock at the front door froze her in place. The knocks continued, persistent and rhythmic, echoing through the silent house. Torn between fear and the need to confront whoever was outside, Jenna approached the door, the candle in her hand trembling. The knocking ceased abruptly, replaced by a soft, whispering voice, calling her name, not through the door, but seemingly from inside the house. Jenna's breath caught in her throat as she stood frozen, the whispering voice calling her name again, closer this time, as if just over her shoulder. The flickering candlelight seemed to hesitate, casting deepening shadows that played across the walls, creating the illusion, or reality, of movement. With a surge of panic-driven courage, Jenna turned quickly, candle held high, expecting to confront an intruder. But the room was empty, the only movement the trembling light from her own hand. The whispering ceased, leaving only the sound of the storm outside, its howls and gusts against the house like the angry breath of some giant creature. Trying to convince herself she was imagining things, Jenna secured the door again and moved through the house, her every sense heightened, listening for any sound that might betray an unwanted presence. The storm seemed to crescendo, mirroring her growing fear, as she completed her check of the windows and doors, finding everything as it should be, yet feeling anything but secure. As she returned to the living room, a sudden flash of lightning illuminated the house, revealing for a brief moment a figure standing outside the window, its face obscured by the rain-streaked glass. Jenna screamed, dropping the candle, plunging the room into darkness as the figure vanished with the thunderclap that followed. Fumbling in the dark, Jenna found her phone, its dim light a small comfort. She attempted to dial emergency services, her fingers clumsy with fear, but the screen showed no signal, the storm having severed all connections to the outside world. Heart racing, she retrieved another candle, lighting it with trembling hands, the soft glow restoring some visibility but doing little to ease her fear. The house felt different now, charged with a palpable sense of dread, as if aware of the unseen visitor lurking at its boundaries. Suddenly, the knocking resumed, louder and more insistent, no longer just at the front door but echoing around the house, as if multiple hands were striking the walls, seeking entry. Jenner, realizing the futility of hiding, decided to confront the situation, her fear mingling with a desperate need for resolution. She moved towards the front door, the knocking intensifying, a cacophony of urgent thuds against the wood. Just as she reached the door, the knocking stopped abruptly, replaced by a low, mournful howling that seemed to emanate from within the house, a sound of grief and longing that chilled her to the bone. 
With the storm raging outside and the unexplained occurrences within, Jenna stood at the door, the boundary between the known safety of her home and the unknown threat outside, her decision to open the door or not hanging in the balance, as the house itself seemed to hold its breath, waiting for what would come next. Gripping the handle with a resolve born of terror and desperation, Jenna opened the door crack, peering into the tumultuous night. The storm lashed at her face with rain and wind, but there was no sign of the figure she had seen. The only evidence of a visitor was a set of muddy footprints leading away from the door, disappearing into the night. With the door ajar, a cold gust swept through the house, carrying with it a faint, almost imperceptible whisper of her name, as if the wind itself was speaking to her. Jenna's fear escalated to a palpable dread, the sense that something was profoundly wrong. Closing the door, she locked it, her hands shaking uncontrollably. The house was now eerily silent, the storm's fury seemingly held at bay outside the walls. Jenna moved away from the door, her eyes scanning the shadows of the living room, half expecting to see the figure standing in a corner watching her. But there was nothing, only the furniture and belongings that made up her daily life, all seeming innocuous yet somehow menacing in the dim candlelight. As she contemplated her next move, a loud crash from the kitchen made her jump. Heart in her throat, Jenna approached the doorway, peering around the corner. The room was in disarray, cupboards open, utensils scattered across the floor, and in the center of the chaos, the kitchen table was overturned, its legs sticking up in the air like the stiff limbs of a dead animal. The sight was unnerving, but more disturbing was the absence of any logical explanation. The house had been securely locked, and she hadn't heard any signs of forced entry. The whispering wind returned, this time sounding like a soft giggle, chilling and disembodied, floating down the hallway. With each passing moment, the line between reality and nightmare blurred. Jenna's rational mind struggled to find logical explanations, but the escalating events defied reason. She felt increasingly trapped in a waking horror, her home transformed into a stage for a terrifying and surreal performance. Deciding she needed to escape, even if only to sit in her car until daylight, Jenna grabbed her keys from the side table. But as she turned to head towards the front door, she stopped dead in her tracks. At the end of the hallway, partially obscured by shadow, stood the figure she had seen outside the window, its features indistinct, but its presence unmistakably menacing. The figure stood motionless, watching her, as if waiting for Jenna to acknowledge its presence. The house around them creaked and groaned, the sound of its structure bending and twisting under an unseen pressure, the storm outside a distant echo compared to the silent tension filling the space between them. Jenna, caught between the urge to flee and the instinct to confront the intruder, stood paralyzed, her fate and the house's secrets hanging in the balance, as the night wore on, each second stretching into eternity, waiting for the breaking point that would unravel the mystery of the true horror that stalked her home. The figure at the end of the hallway remained still, an ominous silhouette against the faint light that filtered in through the storm-battered windows. Jenna's fear, now tinged with an overwhelming sense of inevitability, rooted her to the spot. The house seemed to contract around her, the walls pressing in, the air thick with anticipation. Suddenly, the figure moved, its steps silent, gliding towards her with a fluid, unnatural grace. As it approached, the details of its form became clearer, not a person, but a shadow, a manifestation of darkness, with features that shifted and twisted, never settling into a recognizable human face. Jenna's mind raced, trying to connect the apparition with the whispered name and the laughter that echoed through the corridors. The figure stopped just short of the light cast by her candle, its form rippling, as if disturbed by the illumination. Then, without warning, the candles flickered out, plunging the house into darkness. Jenna heard a whisper right next to her ear, a voice that was both familiar and terrifyingly foreign, saying her name with a sorrowful longing. She felt a cold touch, like fingers brushing against her arm, sending a jolt of terror through her body. In a reflex of fear and defiance, Jenna lashed out, her hand meeting only air. 
She turned and ran, her only thought to escape the oppressive presence that had invaded her home. She navigated the darkened hallways by memory, her heart pounding, her breath coming in short, panicked gasps. As she moved, the house seemed to come alive around her, door slamming shut, the sound of footsteps following her, always a step behind, whispers filling the air, calling her name from every shadow. The storm outside had become a distant background to the nightmare unfolding within, the lightning flashes through the windows offering brief moments of illumination, revealing glimpses of the pursuing shadow. Jenna reached the front door, fumbling with the locks, her fingers clumsy with fear. As she threw the door open, the storm greeted her with a howl, as if the house itself was unleashing its fury upon her escape. She ran out into the rain, the cold water drenching her immediately, the mud clinging to her feet, but she didn't stop, driven by the primal urge to flee from the terror behind her. Looking back, she saw the house looming dark and silent, its windows like blank, staring eyes. The shadow figure stood in the doorway, watching her but not venturing beyond the threshold, as if bound to the house. Jenna stumbled through the storm-ravaged night, her mind reeling with fear and confusion. Behind her, the house sat brooding on the hill, a sentinel keeping its dark secrets, its windows glowing intermittently with the lightning, as if signaling a warning or perhaps a plea. Lost in the storm, Jenna pressed on, the house and its spectral inhabitant receding into the night, but the echo of the whispering voice followed her, a haunting reminder that the horror of the night was far from over, its roots deep in the past of the house and, perhaps, in her own history. Driven by terror, Jenna fled through the storm, the house a dark spectre against the tumultuous sky, its windows flickering like the eyes of a beast in the night. The rain lashed at her, the wind howled in her ears, a symphony of nature's fury that mirrored the chaos within her. She didn't know where she was running to, only that she needed to put as much distance as possible between herself and the house. The muddy terrain slowed her escape, each step sinking into the earth, as if the land itself was reluctant to let her go. After what felt like hours, Jenna found herself at the edge of the woods that bordered the property, the trees swaying menacingly in the wind. Pausing to catch her breath, she looked back towards the house. It sat silent on the hill, a sentinel watching her escape, its presence imposing even from afar. The whispering voice that had followed her from the house was now a distant echo, carried away by the storm, yet the feeling of being watched, of being pursued, clung to her like a cold shroud. With the woods offering the only cover from the storm and the unseen threat behind her, Jenna reluctantly entered the tree line, her heart pounding in her chest. The forest was a dark maze, the trees groaning under the assault of the wind, their branches reaching out like twisted hands. As she navigated through the undergrowth, the sense of dread that had propelled her from the house began to morph into a feeling of being led, drawn deeper into the woods by an unseen force. The storm seemed to guide her, the flashes of lightning illuminating parts that twisted and turned, leading her to an unknown destination. The deeper Jenna ventured into the forest, the more the boundary between reality and nightmare blurred. Shapes moved in the periphery of her vision, half-seen figures that vanished when she tried to focus on them, and the whispering voice, now a chorus of voices, murmured just beyond the edge of hearing, words indistinguishable but filled with an urgent need. Eventually, Jenna emerged into a clearing, in the center of which lay an old, decrepit cabin, its windows dark, the structure seemingly abandoned. Despite its dilapidated appearance, the cabin exuded an air of waiting, as if it had been expecting her arrival. The storm, while still raging around the clearing, seemed muted here, the cabin a calm eye in the tempest. Jenner, driven by a mixture of curiosity and a desperate need for shelter, approached the cabin. The door, hanging ajar on rusted hinges, swung gently in the wind, a silent invitation. Stepping inside, Jenner found the interior to be surprisingly intact, the furnishings covered in dust sheets, the air stale with disuse. It felt like a place frozen in time, untouched by the chaos of the storm outside. As she explored the cabin, Jenna felt the last remnants of the outside world fade away, the storm's fury a distant rumble. 
The cabin, like the house, held secrets, it silenced a heavy presence. And in that silence, the whispering voices found her again, clearer now, calling her name with a desperate intensity. Jenna realized that her flight from the house had not been an escape, but a journey towards something inevitable, a path leading to this forgotten place where the past and present, the living and the spectral, converged. The cabin, much like the house, was a part of her story, a chapter yet to be understood, its pages waiting to be turned. In the eerie calm of the cabin, Jenna sensed the storm outside as if it were a distant memory, its violence replaced by a suffocating silence that filled the space. The whispering voices grew more insistent, their words intertwining with her thoughts, creating a tapestry of fear and revelation. The cabin's interior, under the beam of her flashlight, revealed layers of dust and neglect, but also signs of its past inhabitants, a coat hanging on a peg, a pair of worn boots by the door, a table set as if for a meal, the plates and utensils laid out, now covered in cobwebs. Jenna felt the cabin's history seeping into her, images and emotions flashing through her mind, a family once lived here, happy and content, until a shadow fell upon their lives, a tragedy that echoed the sorrow of her own ancestral home. Drawn to explore further, Jenna found a staircase leading down to what appeared to be a cellar. The air grew colder as she descended, the voices becoming a chorus of whispers that seemed to emanate from the darkness below. The cellar was shrouded in shadows, but as her eyes adjusted, she noticed an array of strange symbols carved into the walls, their meanings obscure but their intent filled with a dark purpose. In the center of the cellar stood a stone altar, surrounded by remnants of candles and scattered pages filled with cryptic writing. The altar, stained with age and use, bore the marks of rituals long since performed, the air around it heavy with an unseen presence. As Jenna examined the scattered pages, her flashlight flickered, casting erratic shadows that danced across the walls, giving the illusion of movement in the peripheries of her vision. The whispering voices crescendoed, merging into a tangible voice that seemed to come from the very walls of the cabin. The voice, sorrowful yet demanding, spoke of a curse that bound the cabin and its occupants to a cycle of tragedy, a curse that mirrored the dark history of Jenna's own home. It spoke of an unending sorrow, of souls trapped between worlds, and of a key that would unlock the door to their salvation or damnation. Jenna, realizing the connection between the cabin and her family's home, felt a surge of fear and understanding. The two places were linked, not just by their shared history of tragedy, but by a deeper, more ancient bond that tied their fates together. The storm outside seemed to find its way into the cellar, the wind howling through unseen cracks, the air turning frigid. Shadows coalesced into forms that were almost human, their outlines blurred and shifting, as if struggling to manifest fully. In the heart of this chaos, the altar pulsed with a dark energy, the symbols on the walls glowing with an ominous light. Jenna, caught in the eye of the supernatural storm, stood at the precipice of understanding, the secrets of the cabin and her family's home about to unfold, their dark legacies intertwined in a dance of fate that had been set in motion centuries ago. As the past and present collided, the boundaries between the physical and the spectral world blurred, the cabin a nexus point for forces beyond comprehension, with Jenna, alone and far from home, the key to unlocking the mysteries that lay in the shadows, waiting to be revealed. The energy in the cellar intensified, the air vibrating with the power of the unspoken words and the weight of the untold history. Jenna, caught in the maelstrom of the supernatural forces converging around her, felt both terrified and compelled to uncover the truth hidden within the cabin's ancient walls. As the glowing symbols on the walls pulsed with a sinister light, the shadowy forms swirling in the darkness began to take on more distinct shapes, whispering of past horrors and forgotten tragedies. Jenna realized that these were the lost souls bound to the cabin, their fates intertwined with the curse that also shadowed her family's home. In the flickering light, the pages scattered around the altar seemed to move of their own accord, flipping open to reveal entries and drawings that depicted rituals and ceremonies, some eerily similar to those she had discovered in her ancestral home. 
The realizations hit Jenna like a physical blow. The cabin was not just linked to her family by tragedy, but was a twin of sorts, a reflection of the darkness that had seeped into her own lineage. The voice that had been whispering to her grew clearer, its tone desperate yet commanding. It urged her to complete a ritual, one that had been left unfinished, promising that this act would free the trapped souls and lift the curse. But Jenna sensed a deeper, more sinister undercurrent to the voice's plea, a hint of malevolent glee at the prospect of the ritual's completion. The storm outside mirrored the chaos within, its howls and screams a cacophony that seemed to push her towards the inevitable. Jenna, standing at the altar, felt the pull of her own history, the legacy of darkness that both her home and the cabin shared, calling her to act. As she hesitated, Torn between the desire to end the suffering and the fear of unleashing something far worse, the shadows in the cellar coalesced into a more human form, the figure of a woman, her features twisted in grief and anger. This specter, a manifestation of the curse's origin, locked eyes with Jenna, her gaze piercing through the veil of time and speaking of the pain and rage that had birthed the curse. Jenna, understanding that the woman before her was key to the cabins and her home's haunted past, took a step forward, her decision made. She would face the legacy head-on, risking the darkness to seek the light for both the living and the dead. As she prepared to invoke the ritual, the spectral woman raised her hand, a silent warning or perhaps a plea for caution. The symbols on the wall flared brightly, casting the cellar in a stark, revealing light, and the storm's fury reached a crescendo, as if nature itself was protesting the impending breach between worlds. Jenna, with the fate of her home and the cabin souls in her hands, began the incantation, her voice steady amid the chaos, invoking powers long dormant and truths long buried. The boundary between the past and the present, the living and the dead, trembled, on the verge of shattering, as the story of the true home alone on a rainy night horror unfolded, ready to spiral into the depths of the unknown. As Jenna chanted the ancient incantation, the atmosphere in the cellar shifted, the air thickening with anticipation and a sense of impending doom. The symbols on the walls glowed brighter, pulsating with an otherworldly energy that seemed to respond to her words. The spectral woman's form wavered, her features contorting in a mixture of anguish and fury. Jenna could feel the weight of centuries-old grievances pressing down on her, the echoes of past tragedies demanding retribution or release. The storm outside raged on, its fury a backdrop to the supernatural drama unfolding within the cabin. Thunder boomed, lightning flashed, and the wind howled in a symphony of chaos that mirrored the turmoil in Jenna's mind. As she continued the incantation, Jenna felt a surge of power coursing through her, a connection to forces beyond her understanding. The ritual seemed to draw on the very essence of the cabin, tapping into its dark history and the souls that were bound to it. Suddenly, a blinding light erupted from the altar, illuminating the cellar with an intensity that forced Jenna to shield her eyes. Shadows danced and writhed in the brilliance, and the spectral woman's form began to fade, her cries of anguish blending with the storm's fury. In that moment of blinding light and deafening sound, Jenna sensed a shift, a release of pent-up energy that rippled through the cabin and beyond. The curse that had plagued the cabin and her family's home for generations trembled on the edge of dissolution, its hold weakened by the power of the ritual. But just as victory seemed within reach, a new presence made itself known, a darkness that was not part of the ritual, an entity that lurked in the shadows, feeding on the chaos and pain. Its presence was palpable, a malevolent force that threatened to undo everything Jenner had worked for. With a sinking feeling, Jenna realized that the true horror of the night had yet to reveal itself. The curse may have been weakened, but the darkness that had spawned it remained, hungry and vengeful. As the light from the altar began to dim and the storm outside subsided, Jenna stood at the precipice of a new chapter in the cabin's history, one that promised to test her resolve and courage in ways she could never have imagined. The whispers in the cellar grew hushed, the echoes of the incantation fading into the silence that followed the storm's passing. Jenna, her heart heavy with the weight of what she had unleashed, braced herself for what would come next, 
knowing that the true test of her strength and will was only just beginning. As the echoes of the incantation faded and the storm outside subsided, Jenna stood in the cellar of the ancient cabin, the air heavy with a sense of foreboding. The blinding light from the altar had dimmed, leaving only the soft glow of the fading symbols on the walls. In the aftermath of the ritual, Jenna felt a mix of relief and apprehension. The curse that had plagued the cabin and her family's home seemed weakened, its grip loosened by the power of the incantation. But she knew that the darkness that had been unleashed was not easily vanquished. The spectral woman, the embodiment of the curse's origin, had vanished along with the blinding light, leaving behind an eerie silence that filled the cellar. Jenna cautiously approached the altar, her footsteps echoing in the stillness. As she reached out to touch the cold stone, a sudden chill ran through her, and she pulled back instinctively. The symbols on the walls began to fade, their glow diminishing until they were nothing more than faint etchings in the stone. With a deep breath, Jenna turned to leave the cellar, her mind racing with thoughts of what had transpired and what might come next. The cabin, once a refuge from the storm, now felt like a prison of secrets and shadows. Ascending the stairs, Jenna emerged into the dim light of the cabin's main floor. The rain had stopped, and a pale moon cast its soft glow through the windows, illuminating the forgotten furniture and the dust-covered surfaces. As she stepped outside, the night air was cool and calm, a stark contrast to the turmoil of moments before. Jenna looked up at the sky, searching for answers in the stars that twinkled overhead. But the peace was short-lived. A rustling in the bushes nearby caught her attention, and she turned to see a figure emerge from the darkness. It was a man, tall and imposing, his features obscured by shadows. Jenna, he called, his voice resonating with a strange familiarity. You've awakened something ancient, something that should have remained asleep. Jenna's heart raced as she recognized the voice. It was the same voice that had whispered to her in the cellar, the voice of the darkness that lurked in the shadows. Who are you? she demanded, her voice trembling with fear and defiance. The man stepped closer, his form shifting and morphing in the moonlight. I am the guardian of this place, the keeper of its secrets, he replied cryptically. But you, Jenner, you have a part to play in this unfolding tale. A role that cannot be denied. Jenna felt a chill run down her spine. She knew that her encounter with the supernatural was far from over, that the darkness that had been awakened was not content to fade into the night. As the man advanced towards her, Jenna braced herself for the next chapter of the horror that had consumed her life. The cabin stood silent and ominous behind her, its windows like eyes watching the unfolding drama. The night held its breath, waiting for the darkness to claim its next victim, as Jenna stood alone, facing an uncertain future filled with terror and uncertainty.